Imagine an island so isolated that its inhabitants have lived virtually unchanged for over 60,000 years. An island still present today, but where outsiders are met with the barrage of arrows and the threat of death. Welcome to North Sentinel Island, a place that raises a chilling question. What makes this secluded landmass in the Indian Ocean one of the most dangerous places to visit on Earth? Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. North Sentinel Island is one of the most remote places on Earth. It's in the Bay of Bengal and is part of an Indian group of islands. The island is very pretty, but it's mostly left alone because of the Sentinelese people who live there. They have been living on their island for more than 60,000 years and have stayed away from the outside world. Most people think that their lives and culture haven't changed much in all that time. The first time people found out about the Sentinelese was in 1771, when a ship called the Diligent saw lights on the shore of North Sentinel Island. The crew didn't stop, they just sailed by. This was probably a good decision. In 1867, people who survived a ship called the Nineveh getting wrecked said they were attacked by the islanders. They described the islanders as not wearing clothes, painted in red, and carrying bows and arrows. That same year, a colonial officer named Jeremiah Humphrey visited the island and saw the islanders using arrows to catch fish. Since those early visits, the Sentinelese have often attacked or killed people who came to their island. The Sentinelese people are a little-known group, but experts do know a few things about their hunting, gathering, and eating habits. The tribe also fishes for sea life, which includes, among other things, mollusks and mud crabs, according to anthropologists who think that bows and arrows are used for hunting. The local people eat their fish and meat without cooking because they don't know how to make fire. They only eat cooked food if they get fire from a lightning strike, and then they try to keep that fire going for as long as possible. This way of eating is not by choice, but because they have no other option. Nor do the Sentinelese people read or write. Neither do they have any knowledge of agriculture. According to reports, they can only count items that have two or fewer, and anything more than that is referred to as many. There are only a few known types of shelters on the island, including big huts that can hold multiple families and makeshift beach huts that can hold one nuclear family. Having said that, this tribe has made some advancements, even though it still largely lives as it did thousands and thousands of years ago. For example, they have been known to sharpen and accompany their weapons with metal that have washed up on shore. The Sentinelese people are unique among the tribes of the Andaman Islands because they have kept their language secret. It's so distinct that even people from nearby islands can't understand it. Dharmendra Kumar, a local police chief noted that it's impossible to communicate with the Sentinelese due to their language differences. In simple terms, no one outside the Sentinelese community knows their language. This makes any attempt to talk with them very challenging. The Sentinelese people have been attempted to contact by a small number of explorers over the years, but most of their efforts have ended in tragedy and suffering. Numerous Sentinelese lost their lives in skirmishes with trespassers who were shipwrecked in the 1980s. In 1997, the Indian government declared that no one was allowed to travel to the island in order to reduce the danger. North Sentinel Island is a place where people are not allowed to go. The government has made a three-mile zone around the island and no one can enter it. If someone tries to get too close, the island's residents may throw stones and arrows to keep them away. So, it's a strictly off-limit area. In 2006, two fishermen, Sundar Raj and Pandit Tiwari, were near North Sentinel Island, which is off-limits by law. They had been drinking and didn't handle their boat properly. At night, their boat's anchor broke and the boat ended up on the island's shore. Other fishermen tried to warn them, but they didn't listen. Unfortunately, they faced serious danger because the island is home to the Sentinelese people who are known to protect their land from outsiders. The two men were allegedly killed by the Sentinelese with axes for trespassing. According to legend, 
Their bodies were first buried in shallow graves after being trussed up like scarecrows out of bamboo and facing the sea. When a helicopter arrived to pick up the men, the inhabitants showered it with homemade weaponry. What was left of the fishermen was their remains. There are people in this world, as we all know, who never believe that the rules apply to them. One of those people was Christian missionary John Allen Chow, who made his way to the Sentinelese Island on November 17, 2018, even though outsiders are expressly forbidden from entering the island. Chow was hoping to convert the endangered species to his religion, but it is thought that they killed him with bows and arrows as soon as he approached the island. Six fishermen who were near the island say they saw the Sentinelese drag a body and bury it on the beach. Though nobody is exactly sure how it all happened. Because any attempt to recover John Allen Chow's body would put the lives of whoever was sent and the Sentinelese themselves at risk. Authorities don't think they will ever be able to do so. The remaining 50 to 150 Sentinelese could be wiped out by a cold virus because the tribal people lack immunity to diseases that are prevalent today. The Sentinelese and Mr. Chow's body ought to be left alone, according to Stephen Corey, director of Survival International. As the story of the Christian missionary John Allen Chow illustrates, not every visitor is attacked by the Sentinelese people. The tribe members drop their weapons when anthropologist T.N. Pandit and his team approached the natives in early 1990s. In fact, Pandit had attempted to make contact before but had been unsuccessful. Most of these early encounters ended with follies of arrows. The one produced the first ever photograph of a Sentinelese tribesman. But this time, the Sentinelese were hospitable to him. Together with other offerings, the anthropologist brought coconuts. They must have decided that the time had arrived, he thought later. Sentinelese posture toward Pandit could not have changed on the spur of the moment, Pandit felt. He sensed a sadness in them as well, which he shared. Pandit said there was a sense that these people who were holding back, holding on, eventually had to give in on a larger scale of human history. It feels like a bygone period of history. But since the natives never welcome another outsider after that visit, something must have changed. The Sentinelese people are known to be unfriendly to outsiders, regardless of the outsider's intentions. This means they treat everyone the same whether someone means harm or wants to help. For example, after the big earthquake and tsunami in the Indian Ocean in 2004, there was worry that this tribe might have been in danger. However, their reaction was the same towards those who wanted to check on their well-being. They preferred to stay isolated and protect their way of life. The whole island was lifted nearly 7 feet above the ocean floor by the earthquake, exposing coral reefs and destroying nearby forests. To outsiders, the tribe's survival of the natural disaster appeared improbable. As the Sentinelese tribesmen fired arrows at the helicopter that was hovering over the area to evaluate the damage, looks like some of the islanders hadn't made it out alive. You probably won't be surprised to learn that the Sentinelese's hostile behavior towards outsiders is due to prior events. British explorers arrived at North Sentinel Island in January 1880 with the intention of surveying the area. They also made the decision to engage in one of the things that British explorers of the 19th century excelled at, which was kidnapping natives for personal gain. All they discovered, though, were deserted villages. Days of searching later, Maurice Fidel Portman, 20, and the expedition party found six Sentinelese people. They sailed for Port Blair after kidnapping each of them. In British custody, two elderly natives perished, the four captive children made it out alive. The young explorer eventually brought gifts back to the island for the young people. In the end, Portman concluded that exploring the island was not a good idea. He would later write, I regret greatly that such a pleasant race is so rapidly becoming extinct. The Sentinelese have suffered nothing but harm from their association with outsiders. Outsiders, fishermen, and missionaries are all dangers to Sentinelese culture, but their biological presence on the island poses the biggest threat. In other words, if the natives did nothing but trade with outsiders, 
they most likely wouldn't survive very long. Their prolonged seclusion prevented them from developing defenses against small bacteria. Therefore, an organism that most people consider to be non-threatening could wipe out the Bengali Islands population. An entire civilization could literally be wiped out by a handshake, sneeze, or touch. As noted by analyst Sophie Grick, extreme vulnerability accompanies isolation. It is likely that the sentinelese have no immunity to common illness like the flu or cold. In 2017, two poachers were discovered hunting sea turtles on the tribal reservation that is inaccessible to outsiders. An individual was reportedly caught multiple times engaging in illegal activities but was later released on bail. Poaching is strictly prohibited in the reserve area and those caught face fines and imprisonment. Yet, the Human Rights Group Survival International argues that the Andaman officials aren't doing enough to protect the highly endangered tribes, pointing to many cases of unauthorized entry as evidence. And with that, we reach the end of our journey into the lives of the Sentinelese. Their steadfast commitment to solitude stands as a testament to their resilience and determination to preserve their way of life. Despite the challenges posed by the outside world, they remain a people untouched by time, safeguarding their culture against all odds. As we conclude this exploration, let's respect their choice of isolation and recognize the efforts for those working to protect their unique existence. So, what do you guys think? What secrets lie hidden within its lush foliage? How do the Sentinelese survive in this pristine ecosystem? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time.